Hi everyone, a big welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a good old fashioned book tag. I haven't done a book tag in so long. I'm actually kind of excited. So it's currently the height of women's prize season. This year's winner is due to be announced on the 13th of June. And so I thought I'd do a tag that I've been meaning to do for ages, the women's prize for fiction tag. I've got seven questions to answer. I do feel like there's been a few different iterations of this tag, so I'll do my best to leave the original linked below. We've got so many amazing books and female authors to chat about today. I feel like this is a really nice opportunity to dive back into some old favourites as well. Bring back to light some books that I loved years ago when I first started my channel. As it is a tag, I tag all of you. If you have a booktube channel, I tag you. Please let me know down below in the comments if you're going to make a video and I will definitely watch. And if you don't have a channel, I still tag you. <laughs> Stick some of your answers down below. I would genuinely love to hear your recommendations. So let's get into the questions. Question one is, which was the first women's prize winner you read? When did you read it? And what did you think of it? So the first women's prize winner I read I think, was A Girl is a Half-Formed Thing by Ema McBride. This one in 2014, but I actually read it a couple of years later when I first really started getting into following the prize. I loved this book when I read it. It actually kind of blew my mind. Plunging you deep into the psyche of the narrator, this book tells the story and coming of age of a young woman, detailing the long shadow caused by her brother's childhood brain tumour and the trauma and sexual abuse that she suffered as a child. This book is challenging both thematically and linguistically. It is one of the best most immersive stream of consciousness style books I have ever read. This was actually a really formative reading experience for me, I feel, both in terms of starting to read more experimental literary fiction and also by making me such a fan of the prize. I really need to revisit some of Ema McBride's work at some point. Question number two is, which author have you read because of the prize who has become a favourite? So there are a lot of amazing authors authors who I have discovered because of the prize, but if we're talking about the ones who have become true, true favourites, firstly, definitely Claire Lombardo, who was on the list in 2020 for the most fun we ever had. Set in Chicago, this one follows a madly in love married couple, 40 years into marriage and their four children, as a long buried secret threatens to shatter the lives they have all built. This is an epic family saga filled with drama and intrigue and heartache. Basically my favourite type of women's prize novel. I actually also have a proof of Claire Lombardo's newest novel coming later this year, which I'm super excited for. Another favourite author of mine who I read because of the prize is Anne Patchett. She was also on the list in 2020 for The Dutch House. This one tells the story of siblings Danny and Maeve over five decades from when they moved into the lavish Dutch house at the end of the Second World War and were then exiled by their stepmother. This is a stunner of a novel. Themes of childhood and memory create this persistent, hazy feel to the novel throughout. Beautiful characterization, beautiful prose. Also, this is a really strong audiobook. And thirdly, I've got to mention Sarah Moss, who was on the prize in 2019 for Ghost Wall. That being said, I'm not entirely sure that I actually read Sarah Moss because she was on the prize. I think maybe I was a fan of her before she was longlisted. Either way, she's so good. Ghost Wall is set in the north of England and follows a teenager, Sylvie, and her family as they join an archaeological group to recreate the lives of people in the Iron Age. Her prose in here is so delicious and sensory. I kind of want to eat it. Her novels always feel perfectly short and tense and observant, 
with a thrilling kick at the end. Big recommend her other novels, Summer Water and The Fell 2. Question number three is, which favourite author of yours has yet to win the prize? Sarah Winneman. Not only has she never won the prize, she's never even been longlisted. This is a travesty. <laughs> and I will die on that hill. Honestly, the shock and disappointment I felt that she didn't make it onto the list in 2022 for Still Life, I'm never getting over that. Still Life is a stunning historical novel moving between Tuscany and London from the 1940s throughout multiple decades. It follows Ulysses, a young British soldier, and Evelyn, an older female novelist, and a wider cast of superb characters. This is full of life, beauty and pain and tenderness and humour. Sarah Winman just does life so well. And my personal favourite novel from her, one of my favourite books of all time, is Tin Man. This one tells the story of Ellis and Michael, two men who became best friends when they met as boys in Oxford. Told through multiple perspectives, jumping around in time, you ultimately build up the most beautiful picture of these two men's lives. To throw in another favourite author of mine, who has also never won the prize, Sarah Hall. She is a Cumbrian author, which is where I'm from in the north of England. Her writing is so accomplished and beautiful. She really knows how to write rural settings and painful and tender human relationships. My personal favourite novel from her is Horsewater, which was published in 2002. This one is set in the 1930s in a small rural community in the Lake District when a man from industrial Manchester arrives with plans to build a reservoir in the town. I fell in love with Sarah Hall years ago and I will now read anything she brings out. Question number four is, which longlisted, shortlisted or winning novel has surprised you the most and why? So I'm going to say Praise Song for the Butterflies by Bernice L. McFadden. This was longlisted for the prize in 2018. It is published by the super cool indie publisher Jacaranda Books. This was the first time I'd heard about this book, this publisher, this author, and it blew me away. Set in West Africa, it tells the story of a young girl named Abio who is enslaved in a religious shrine for 15 years when she is gifted as a sacrifice due to bad luck befalling her family. This is fascinating and gripping with the most beautiful characters. I still remember to this day reading the opening passage and then rereading it and rereading it again. This was probably one of the most satisfying women's prize reading experiences I've ever had. I just love it when it helps me discover new gems that I otherwise wouldn't have read. Question number five is, which lesser known favorite author of yours would you like us all to read and which book would you recommend? So I guess Sarah Hall could be an answer to this question. She certainly isn't as well known as the bigger names you see on the women's prize list. So I'm also going to have to say Mary Beth Keane. Ask Again Yes was one of my favourite reads of 2019. It follows two families living in a suburban community in New York from the 1970s to present day. It examines various relationships and bonds between the family members and centres around a tragedy which occurs that ultimately haunts them all for years to come. This book has everything. It has the characters, it has the plot. I haven't heard about nearly enough people reading her work. So many people would love her, especially if you tend to love the family drama type reads on the women's prize lists. Read this book. Question number six is, which book published before the prize started could have won? So I've got two very clear answers for this. 
Firstly, Moon Tiger by Penelope Lively. This was published in the 1980s. It is one of my favourite modern classics. It follows the story of an old female writer who is coming to the end of her life when she decides to write her final novel, A History of the World as Experienced by Her. This is so expansive and stunning. This retrospective look at Claudia's life what she picks out to be significant and how this singular human experience plays into history as a whole is awesome. I heard Penelope Lively read a section from this book at a booker event a few years ago and it was one of the best things I've ever heard. Secondly, I'm going to answer The Gathering by Anne Onright. Kind of a cheat because Anne Onright has been on the women's prize list many times since this book was published, but honestly, this one is her best. It came out in 2007, it's set in Dublin, and tells the story of the nine Hegarty siblings as they all converge on their family home for the wake of their brother Liam. Anne Onright explores family dynamics in here so persuasively. They are spot on. I can't see her writing ever topping this novel, people really need to dive back into her backlist. And the final question is, which has been your favourite winner so far? Hands down, my answer to this question is last year's winner, which was Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingsolver. This was my favourite read of last year. It's probably going to become a favourite book of mine ever. A modern retelling of David Copperfield set in the Appalachian Mountains in Virginia, USA during the heart of the opioid crisis. This tells the story of the birth, the childhood and coming of age of Demon Copperhead. This is an all-consuming, sweeping masterpiece which showcases one of the best characterizations I have ever read. If this hadn't have won last year, I'd have been kicking off. So there we go guys, those are my answers to all of the questions. I really enjoyed doing this tag, it was really fun to answer some specific questions, and I feel like we got to talk about some books that I really loved in the past that I haven't talked about enough recently. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you all really enjoyed it too. Please do let me know down below if you're going to make a video or just any of your answers to the questions. I hope you're all doing well, I'm looking forward to chatting, and I will hopefully see you really soon in another video. Bye guys.